All right, you're finally ready. You're ready to pick up the phone and call a college coach and actually have your first conversation with a college coach. I know, I know it's nervous. It's nerve wracking to think about having to talk to somebody that you really haven't met, you really don't know. But they need to know who you are. Nobody's gonna offer you a scholarship even if you're the greatest player in the world. Now some people will, but most people want to know who you are as a person too. And so I want you to be yourself. And we're going to talk you through what you need to do on this phone call with your college coach. Okay? It should not be your first contact. We talked about it before in unit one. Your first contact to a college coach needs to be an email. Please don't call a college coach the first thing in the world because it's not going to, you're not going to get a hold of them. And if you do get a hold of them, they're going to be like, who are you? I, I don't know who you are. I've never seen you play. I don't know if I want to talk to you. How long do I want to spend with you? It just feels very awkward. And this probably this phone call you're about to make probably is going to be a little awkward too because we're from a generation now that this is how we talk to each other. I go to restaurants, husbands and wives. It used to be this. And now it's this. We've fallen away. Now, I'm not going to preach to you. You can get on my uh, other courses we talked about with uh, Jesus and everything else, but I'm not going to preach to you. I'm just telling you, you need to talk. You need to carry on a conversation. You can, take a, you can have a sample one with your mom and your dad before you do it. But when we talk about calling a college coach, I'm going to take you step by step through what you need to do in order to be successful in your first phone call with the college coach. You ready? All right, the first thing that you need to do when you call a college coach is don't be nervous. You're like, Coach D, that's not gonna happen. I'm gonna be nervous anyway. Understand something, you're just talking to somebody. You're just talking to me. I try to make you feel as comfortable as possible because when you call me, I'm just like, hey, what's going on? How you doing today? I try to make a, make it not a joke, but I try to make your name shorter or I try to use your initials. I try to just be myself because I want you to see me. And what I really want as a college coach is I want to see you. I don't want you to be somebody different. I don't want you to be up there. Uh, hello. Uh, how you doing? Hey, 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 hey. You know, I don't, I don't need that. I just need you to say, Hey coach, what's going on? Hey, it's Susie. How you doing today? How's, how's life? Do you have a dog or a cat? You know, just have fun. It's just an, an, a conversation with somebody, obviously that has a hundred thousand dollar scholarship, but it's just a conversation with somebody that you just want to kind of get to know them a little bit. Cause this will add value to you. As we talk about in the next unit, we talk about going on official visits and actually getting to talk to the coaches and some questions you ask them face to face or her face to face. Yes, this is your first opportunity to get to know the coach too. So the coach is sitting over there nervous too because they really want to talk to you. They want to hear your voice. That You guys have set this up and we're going to talk about that in a second. But don't be nervous. Don't be nervous. Just chill out, rest, get some food. You know, don't drink a whole lot of water because you don't want to have to run to the bathroom in the middle of it or put it. Don't be nervous. Just be yourself. Number two, set up a day and time. You need to set up a time. You, that time needs to be whatever day it is, whatever time it is, I would recommend you set up that time. And then I would have you make that phone call. Because if they set up that time, they might be doing something else, but they're expecting to talk to you. And maybe they just forgot. They're, they're very busy. I know you're very busy, but they have probably 20 or 30 recruits that, are, that they're talking to. And you have pro hopefully one coach you're talking to this night. This is the school you want to go to. This is in your top five. We talked about it before. This is a big school for you. So you want to talk to the coach. You want to set up a time. And if you say you're going to call them at five, don't call them at 430. Don't call them at 515. Don't call them at 505. Call them at five or 459. That would be even be better. But really set yourself a, a reminder and make sure you call them on time. So set up a day and a time to talk on the phone. Okay. Number three, go to a quiet place. So many times I've talked to recruits and they're at a baseball game or they're at a basketball game or they're hanging out with their friends in a car. I don't need to hear all that stuff, especially on my first phone call with you. I don't mind if it's on my 20th one and you've already committed to me, but if it's on my first phone call with you, I don't need to have a band playing in the background. 
or people jumping up and down and I can't even hear a word you're saying and you can't hear me. Go to a quiet place. Go in your room. Go to a place you feel comfortable and just get into a quiet area where it's just yourself. Don't have anybody else there. I know you say, well, I need support. No, because they're going to laugh. They're going to giggle. They're going to say something. You're going to feel nervous in front of them and in front of these other people. Go to a quiet place by yourself. I would recommend a closet or in your room by yourself if you can. Sit in a chair, not on your bed. Don't lay down. Sit in a, sit in a chair, sit up, and talk. So we talk to you, go to a quiet place, okay? Make sure that you have plenty of bars in this place too on your, on your cell phone. Make sure you have good coverage. Everybody hates having to hang up and go on, go on it again. Make sure you have good coverage and find out where that place is and go an hour early and say, do I have good coverage? Call your mom from that place. Hey mom, can you hear me? Everything good? Okay, good. And then take a test run with your mom or your dad or your boyfriend or your best friend, whatever. Make a test run before you call the coach to make sure they can hear you clearly, okay? Number four, this is big for me. You might not be from the South, okay? But say yes, sir, and yes, ma'am. Say no, sir, and no, ma'am. Okay, I know that I'm asking you to be yourself, but you need to show some character. You can't say, what's up, how you doing? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you only live once, YOLO, YOLO. You, know, you can't be like that in your first phone call. I don't mind if you do. I mean, if that's who you are, that's wonderful. I want, to be, I want you to be who you are, but take some time and say yes, sir, and yes, ma'am. Okay, don't tell me yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am, okay? But say yes, sir, and yes, ma'am. Those are huge things, and those will set you apart. Believe me, that will set you so far apart from everybody else that I've talked to today. And that's what I need. I need somebody that sets apart. I need to remember you. You need to be memorable. And the person that's memorable is the person that is respectful. You respect my time by calling me on time or calling me a little bit early, not a half hour early, but five minutes is okay. Okay, make sure you're not late. And then the second, the third thing you have to do is you have to say yes, sir, to me. Say yes, sir, and no, sir. And I'll probably tell you, hey, it's okay. You don't have to say that. Still do it. Got it? Still do it. Now, if you do it 12 times and they say, if you do it again, I'm going to hang up the phone. Then you might want to stop. But think about saying yes, sir, and no, sir, and yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. Okay? Now, I need you to write down a list of questions. All right? Even if it's your first, first time ever making a phone talk, call to a college coach, write down a list of questions. When you write down these questions, they need to be open-ended questions. I don't want you to ask college coaches yes or no questions. Allow them to talk a little bit. I want to allow you to talk a little bit whenever you call me. So if you call me, I'm going to ask you open-ended questions. I want to hear what the coach has to say. So I'm going to ask him or her open-ended questions. What does that mean? That means these are not yes or no questions. Don't say, do you like me? They'll say yes. And then there's awkward silence. Say, what are some things that you like about me? And then they sit back and they say, oh, that's a good question. I really like your approach. I really like the way that you lead the court. And it allows you to have a good idea of what they're talking about. So I've written down some because I want to make sure that I say the right ones to you. So I want you need to write them down. The reason why you need to write them down is because you're going to forget them. And I've been on the other side of the phone when somebody says, I say, I always end, do you have any questions for me? And people are like, um, oh, I had some, but, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, no, uh, oh, no. Write them down. You'll have them in front of you. You're ready to go. So I'm going to tell you some of the questions you can ask. The first question I think you should ask a college coach in your first talk with them is, what positions are you recruiting in 2022 or whatever your graduation year is? They say nothing or an outside. Again, that, it's an open-ended question, but then ask, okay, well, what type of outside hitter are you looking for? Somebody that hits well or six rotation or what? Middle hitter, okay, what are some stats that you would like with that middle hitter? Continue to ask them questions along that line, but I think the first question you need to ask is, what positions are you recruiting in my, my time? We talked about it a couple of chapters ago. Finding out if a, if a school is recruiting your position, ask the coach, and this is your opportunity to ask the coach. What positions are you recruiting in my graduating class? Number two, what is your coaching philosophy? If a coach doesn't have one, I wouldn't say beware. It's not that big of a deal. 
But if a coach can't tell you what he's all about, then probably won't, probably not a great coach and probably not prepared for your phone call. All right. If you ask me what my coaching philosophy, I can tell you right now, my coaching philosophy is to develop young women. Okay. That make wise decisions. I don't want to be known as a coach uh, by how many games that I won or lost. I want it to be known that I won the lost. I want to add value to my players. I want to teach you first how to be a great volleyball player. Second, how to be a great teammate. And then third, how to be a great young woman and make wise decisions. That's pretty easy. But again, you get to know who I am when you ask me my coaching philosophy. So ask your coach their coaching philosophy. If they say, oh, I don't really have one, say, well, what's your coaching? What, how do you coach during a game? Are you a yeller? Do you sit on the ground, do you sit on the seat? Do you jump up and down? Are you talking all the time? Are you letting your assistant coach? What type of coaching, what, what is your coaching style? And I think that's a great second question to ask. What do you recruit in my class? What is your coaching philosophy? Number three, why do you coach volleyball? I can pretty much tell you, they're not gonna tell you the money is great. No, but this allows them to open up their heart to you too. These are questions that are open-ended questions. You can add some more, but asking a coach why you coach volleyball, you're gonna learn a lot about that person's motives. If they say, you know what, I just wanna win at all costs, I wanna kill them. That might be great for you, but you might be like, ooh, I don't want to sit in there and be throwing up every day at practice because we're just working, working, working. I, and you know, I want to work and I want to be competitive. I do too, but it's not about that. That's not my end goal. I coach volleyball because I believe it's God's gift to me and I want to use it to, get, to glorify him. So we talk about all these things. All right. So I don't want you to list down a hundred questions because the next question or the next thing that you have to do as you get ready is you want to keep it short. I really don't think that a, a, a phone call should last more than about 10 minutes. Most of these coaches have families. They have a daughter, they have a son, they have a wife. They have people they need to get to. And if you're on the phone with them for 45 minutes, you've taken up a lot of time that they can't use on their family. It's your first phone call. Get in, get out, ask your questions, get a good idea. Really see if this person is recruiting you. And you can find out if they're recruiting you, if they're going to talk to you. And they answer your questions more than, uh, yeah, no, yeah, no. Get in, get out, keep it short. I think the 10 minute limit is there. If this coach is verbose and they talk a lot, like I do, let them talk. But don't keep on talking and try to keep them on. If you feel they want to get off the phone, let them get off the phone. And again, that'll help you to know a little bit more about how much they want you. Got it? Okay. So that's number six. Number seven is you always want to end the conversation. You want to end it and just say bye. You want to end it and say, okay, what's the next step? I wrote down here, always end with asking, what's the next step for me to stay on your recruiting list? I think that's a great question to ask. <clears throat> if you ask them in the summer, they'll probably say, I need you to come and uh, come to our camp or send me your schedule for nationals or Whatever it is, if it's in November, then I need you to have your schedule for your club tournament. I need you to come to our clinic that we're having. I'd love for you to come on an official visit. Always end asking what the next step is, and then you go do the next step. So many players call me and say, all right, that's it, bye. And then we're in this awkward stage of, well, should I email him next or should I do that? What's, what's the next thing? I don't wanna to be too over aggressive, but what am I supposed to do next with this coach? And I might tell you, hey, just send me an email tomorrow reminding me that, you know, to put me on your recruiting list for 2022. Whatever it is, ask the coach before you get off the phone, what's the next step for me to be on your, for me to stay on your recruiting list for 2022? That's a huge thing because they're not going to be able to go around it. They're probably going to tell you, you know what, we're probably not going to be recruiting you. They might be honest with you. They might just shut you down right there. And guess what? That's a blessing. Because now you know that's not the place for you and you can go to the next one. These coaches that hold you on, and if you don't ask that question, you might not know. You might not say, hey, all right? But don't get into it too much. Just ask them so you know what you need to do next. That's a huge thing to end your phone call with. So let's go through it one more time, the steps that you have to do during your first phone call to a college coach. The first thing is don't be nervous, okay? If you're not very, if you don't talk to a lot of people, I understand that this is nerve wracking, but understand we're people. We're just like your mom or your dad. 
We're just like your, your pastor at your church or the person behind the counter at a Chick-fil-A. Nobody's that awesome, but you know, we are those people. So don't be nervous. Number two, set up a day and a time to call a college coach. Email and say, hey, can we talk at 1245 on Sunday? Or I wouldn't do that. I would probably do it in the afternoon. I think Sunday afternoons is probably family time. I would try to get them at the beginning of the week. Monday night would probably be the best. Somewhere in between 7 and 8 p.m. would probably be best. If you don't have that time open, find a time. But evenings after practice um, is great or early in the mornings before noon would be great. If you can take a, don't take a day off of school, but if you can ask your teachers, hey, can I have 10 minutes to go college, college coach, or go into your guidance counselor's office, that would be even the best too, okay? Number three, go to a quiet place. Number four, say yes, sir, and yes, ma'am. Number five, write down a list of questions. Number six, keep it short, under 10 minutes. And number seven, always ask at the end of the phone call, what can I do next to stay on your recruiting list? That'll help you to be on, to stay on the radar of these college coaches, that'll help you to move to the next step, which means now you're gonna go on campus and make your official or unofficial visit. That's what we're gonna talk about in the next unit. Take a look through these next couple of quizzes just to make sure we're on the same page. Write out some things and ask you, one of the questions is, what are some good questions to ask a college coach in your first uh, phone call? You already have them, I wrote them down for you, okay? Take a look at them. Hang on, or hang on, we're gonna to get to that quiz in just a little bit, and we're gonna go into the unit four. Unit four is the fun one. We're gonna to start to go to, the, go to the campuses. We're getting our official visits. We're gonna end unit four with, guess what? Signing day, we're getting close. You're almost recruited, you're almost committed, you're almost there, let's do it. We'll see you in the next, next unit. Have a good one, God bless and good luck.